in the past year, you may have heard of this little thing called Signals. It's been huge uh, in transforming the ecosystem and making it available for users to make more modular and composable bits of code uh, that are reusable. Today, we're going to be writing our own implementation of Signals live, uh, so wish me luck. Uh, but uh, if we look at the API, we have a signal here which has an initial value, right, that is then bound to an item. You can access that value using a function, and then you can update that value using dot set, right? So let's go ahead and get started. So if I'm writing a signal implementation, I'm going to want some typings here. So we're going to get the initial value. I think I've spelled that wrong, but that's OK. Uh, and then we're going to have a value which is set to that initial value. And we're going to type that as well, just to be safe. We're going to have a get value function, which just returns value here. And then we're going to have get value dot set, which equals a new function which has a new value, also of type t. And we are going to set value to equal new value. And then finally, we are going to return get value here. So basically, we have a function that we are assigning a new property to, because functions are just objects, kind of, sort of, uh, that you can add properties to. Uh, so now we can do const count equals signal of 0. And we could do console.log count and it'll access the data just like we would expect, right? So this is a really primitive version of signals. But one of the more interesting parts about signals is the idea of computed values. Let's hear it for computed values. Woo! A lot of Angular developers have been wanting that for a long time. So it's, it's very exciting to see. So the API here is that you have a computed, which is a function that then uh, takes another signal and then multiplies it by two, right? So to get this started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something called a listener. Now, this listener is going to be of type uh, avoid function, or it's going to be null, and we're going to set that initial value to null. Uh, sorry, there we go. There we go. Uh, and then we're going to create a computed signal, which is going to, ex again, have a type of t, which is going to accept a function as an argument, which returns t. And then here, Whenever we get the value, we are going to check if there is a listener that is present. And if there is a listener, we're going to then add it to a set of subscribers, which is also going to be type of a void function. So we can have multiple things here. So we can say if listener subscribers dot add listener. And then finally, when we set the value, we're going to say subscribers. Sorry, this comes after. We're going to say subscribers dot for each function. And then we're going to call each of these. Right? Now our computed implementation can look something like this. We can say let value, which is going to be of type t. We're then going to bind the listener to update that value based on the function. We're going to then call that immediately, unbind the listener. And then we're going to have a get value function once again. And we're going to return get value. So here we have count. We can do count.set1. We're then going to console.log count again. We're going to do double count, which is a computed of count times two. And then we're going to console.log double count. Right? So if I pass this into the TypeScript compiler, and then we execute it, we should see 0, 1, and 2. And there we have it. That's an implementation of signals from scratch. Thank you.